Hi and welcome to our today demo which is about Kubernetes networking. I'm sure you have all heard about uh, Kubernetes which is getting lots of attraction now these days and many of the cloud providers like Google or Amazon or Azure even they are providing the Kubernetes services to, to their customers. Kubernetes is a orchestration platform which can provide application deployment in a high availability manner using the containers and mainly specifically with Docker containers. So for example, you can tell to Kubernetes that go and deploy uh, a WordPress for me on five instances and put the load balancer in the front. Uh, the Kubernetes master has this role for managing the Kubernetes worker nodes and it can go and talk to the worker node and spin up the new containers uh, inside the different worker nodes and it will ensure that these were the all of these containers they are all operational and it will also create a separate load balancer in front of all of these containers which are running for example this specific uh, wordpress service and also it has this ability to find out oh for deploying the wordpress i need to also deploy mysql as a base requirement for running the wordpress you may think about why we are going to study the Kubernetes networking or what is the specific about the Kubernetes networking here. Uh, the answer to that is uh, the way Kubernetes works is uh, Kubernetes requires that all the containers to be able to reach each other regardless of any layer two or layer three network in between them. And also the Kubernetes, uh, the network provider, the networking system within the Kubernetes, it has this ability to create a virtual network, virtual overlay networks on top of the existing layer two or layer three network to, to be able to provide connectivity between the containers. Also, we need to remember Kubernetes is not like OpenStack or it's not like VMware vSphere or any of these uh, infrastructure management system. So in order to make the Kubernetes working, we have to create the Kubernetes worker node and the master node and the master node does not build any of these worker nodes. So this is the uh, the duty of the system admin to create the worker nodes or you know build the uh, infrastructure for running the Kubernetes. Once the worker node is created, then it can be added to the uh, to the Kubernetes master to be managed. And these containers, which are being placed inside the Docker uh, in each of these worker nodes, they will be placed by the Kubernetes master. Uh, Kubernetes master is is not one single entity. So in high available uh, in production environments, you can create a highly available Kubernetes masters to ensure they provide high availability and business continuity to your production Kubernetes system. I think one of the reasons that Kubernetes mainly uh, supports and uses Docker is because of the Docker hub. Uh, because whenever you need to create uh, any kind of application, uh, so finally it will get translated into a Docker pool command uh, here in the worker node, which goes into the Docker hub and download that specific uh, container from the Docker hub and builds and builds and runs this, that container here. Uh, similarly, also we have uh, in, Do in Kubernetes, we have something called Helm which is like a package manager for, for Kubernetes. So Helm modules or Helm template, they are written more high level and mainly the, you, can, you can create a Kubernetes Helm file to tell the Kubernetes to, for example, create these five instances and what type of the load balancer you have to put it in the front or what kind of storage you are planning to use for, uh, for, for this particular application. And this explanation of the Kubernetes, which I provided here, is just a very bare minimum. So Kubernetes also has lots of other features, which uh, it's out of the you know scope of our course. It goes into more advanced topics. But in general, that's how our Kubernetes works. And that's the main duty of the, of the Kubernetes. All right. So for our demo, we will be deploying Kubernetes on on-prem on uh, servers to doing some demo about the Kubernetes networking. Uh, you can deploy Kubernetes using a 
the very famous uh, Kubernetes testing environments like Minikube, which can help you to bring up a whole Kubernetes environment with just a single virtual machine. And also there are some uh, Kubernetes in the cloud testing labs available from Kubernetes and other partners of the Kubernetes, which you can use and do some uh, basic tutorials for, for getting familiar with Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes has very good features when it comes to the cl public cloud providers. So for example, with Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud, uh, Kubernetes deployment implementation on those uh, public clouds are working very well. When it comes to on-prem, you know, some of the features are not uh, available in, 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 in like vanilla. For example, on the on-prem Kubernetes, there is no uh, ready-made support for external load balancers for the Kubernetes. Whereas when you deploy the Kubernetes on AWS and if you create uh, a service using five different uh, pods or instances, you can have just a uh, load balancer in front of them and uh, the Azure or AWS can provide those IP addresses, the, the listener IP addresses, the external IP addresses to the Kubernetes. So uh, in our demo, we will not be using load balancers. So we just create a Hello World deployment with two instances here in this demo. So we will have a Kubernetes master and two worker servers, and we will have the Hello World deploy deployed on two instances, which they will be placed on two different servers. Uh, so once we do this deployment, you will be uh, able to see that uh, our networking provider for Kubernetes, which in this case today we will be using Flannel. Flannel will be creating a separate uh, IPv4 network for each of these nodes. So the worker server one will have a different Flannel network. So we, all of our containers who are living in Kubernetes worker one, they will have a different IP subnet than the containers which are all running on the Kubernetes uh, worker number two. and the flannel networking here, it will be able to do the transfer of packets and networking between between the Kubernetes networkers, between the Kubernetes worker servers. So flannel is something very similar to Calico, and it does some stuff for doing VXLAN between the ports. So if the traffic, for example, is coming from container number one needs to go to company number two, although there is no real uh, routing here in our network to reach to the uh, to the container network of the worker number two, Flannel will be able to overlay that traffic to the to the Flannel server here on the Kubernetes number worker number two. All right. So now for starting the deployment, uh, we will be using uh, Juju. So if you go to the Kubernetes, there are multiple ways for deployment of the Kubernetes. Uh, I will be using this one, the setting up Kubernetes with Juju, and because it's simple, and I'm also using uh, this mass metal as a service server, which is managing our uh, our server here in the lab. So all of our servers are managed by mass, and mass can provision these servers. These are all bare metal servers, and we will be using uh, the Juju Juju charm. Now for doing that, if I go to uh you can you can either start from here you know uh follow the the steps which are shown here you can use uh this one the conjure up uh for setting up the kubernetes but i will not be using conjure up because i need to do some more customization so i will use just use the juju deploy now to start with i will go to uh to the juju charms uh website and from here I will go to so Juju Charms uh, is a platform, is a is a solution as we described earlier that you know it can deploy big softwares, big softwares which have lots of components and stuff. Uh, we did the deployment of the, of our OpenStack also using the using the Juju. Now if I go for if I go to store and I choose uh, Kubernetes, for Kubernetes they have different uh deployment so they have a production cluster and this one the staging cluster we will be using this one because 
Uh, it just requires two machines, one master and one worker node. But I will do some modification here to make it for one master and two worker nodes. Uh, this one requires around 10 machines, which is much, much higher than what, what we are expecting as, as a demo. So this one is called Kubernetes Core, and it will be deploying the Kubernetes master, etcd, ezrsa, finale, and a worker server. Now etcd, this one is a distributed database for 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 Kubernetes. So Kubernetes uses its etcd for storing information. So all the uh, worker servers and also the master they will be accessing this database. Uh, so for example, whenever you create a service or you create a deployment using Kubernetes, uh, it will be written inside the ATCD database. Uh, and Flannel is the networking. We can use also Cladico, but uh, in this demo, we, we will be using Flannel. Now to start with, uh, either we can use Kunjura, which we will not be using that. and we will be downloading the file, the, the deployment file, which is located here. And I will be running this file inside our Juju console. So the Juju console, which is located here, I will do SSH uh, to this box and all of the deployment will happen from here, the deployment of the, of the Kubernetes. So what I need to do is the, I need to download this file. So I will download this file directly on our Juju console. So let's connect to our Juju console. One if you want to to find find that. Uh, okay. So let's go to. We have a folder here. Kubernetes Juju deploy. Uh, it's empty. Let me download this file. So this is that bundle file which we downloaded. Let's have a view on what's going on here. So we have these machines. So machine zero, machine one, and I want to add one more machine also here. And we will call that two because we want to deploy two worker servers. And one more thing about uh, the constraint and these machines actually. Yeah, so these machines are all managed by mass. Let's have a look at the mass also. Uh, so this one is the mass, uh, the 192.168.251.2. And if we look at our drawing, this is a server. Uh, it's a virtual machine. And this virtual machine is managing this deployment. Uh, now within the mass, uh, it just managed all of our servers. These are all bare metal servers. So we have few servers here. Uh, this one is running. So this one actually is running the Juju controller right now and this is already managed by it's already connected to the to the juju so these two servers because they have more memory i will be using these two servers as workers uh, for doing that i have already assigned a tag to these servers so this server server one it has a tag of worker 128 and uh, similarly we have the server two as well with the same tag the worker 128 and I want to have this server, server seven, to become my Kubernetes controller. So I have a tag on k8-ctrl, the Kubernetes controller. So now to tell to Juju that I want to have the machine zero, which is going to be our, our Kubernetes master, uh, we will say this should have a tag of Kubernetes controller ctrl and for the machine one i will add a tag of worker 128 and similarly for the other one also we will say this one also tags is as worker 128 uh, the services so easy rsa will be deployed one unit and it will be deployed as a ver as a container as lxd container on the machine zero the etcd database that will be deployed one unit on the machine zero so it will be on the machine itself Nalal will be deployed on all the machines so it doesn't have very specific information uh, kubernetes master and we don't need these constraints here 
number of unit is one and it will be deployed on machine zero Kubernetes worker we don't need this constraint because we have already said that earlier and we need two machines for Kubernetes worker and it will be deployed on one and also on machine number two and these are the relationship which the, the Juju will be deploying. So Kubernetes master connection to the Kubernetes API, uh, ETC the connection to the database and all of this stuff. So these are actually the, the automation script which Juju will, will run. So once it does the installation of the components of the Kubernetes, uh, it does all of this uh, dynamic configuration of this, uh, uh, this software component to connect them together. So technically it's a, uh, changes of the view configuration file, you know, putting the IP addresses or uh, services names and connecting these applications together. And I will save this file now. So we have got this file, the bundle.yaml. So this is our uh, Kubernetes file, which we will ask Juju to deploy this bundle. And once we start the deployment, uh, we expect there's more servers to be running. Now to start with, we will just issue juju deploy bundle.yaml. And by this command, it loads this bundle file and it start talking to our the juju controller server. So juju controller server, which is sitting here. So juju console is transferring all of this information to the juju controller and juju controller will start doing this deployment now for us. Now to monitor the deployment, so these are all the uploads which are happening and let's give it some time. Okay, so Juju has completed uploading this information to the Juju controller. You can see uh, we got bundle machine 0, bundle machine 1 and 2, with they are called machine 3, 4 and 5 in Juju and also added all of this relationship. Now we need to monitor that, you know, what's happening there. Uh, if I issue the command juju status, this will tell us that, you know, what's happening. So here on the top, this is the, the model, the application. So we have easy RSA uh, and the other applications. Application, they are sitting on the units and units are sitting on the machines. So the three machines which we have here, this is the master. So it's got the IP address and these two the worker servers and this one also is a uh, uh, LXC container which is uh, which is going to run the easy RSA so these servers are now in deployment mode and for the units they are saying that you know waiting for the machine to be ready so what will happen here is that let me put a watch here uh, if we go back to our mass server uh, in the mass here now you can see uh, server 1 and server 2, which are workers, deployment, deploying Ubuntu 11, uh, deploying Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, and this one, which was supposed to be our uh, Kubernetes master, is also being having uh, Ubuntu 18 installed. So we need to wait for some time for these servers to be up. After that, uh, the Juju will start doing the deployment. So let's give it some time and we will come back once it is completed. All right, so now as you can see, your deployment has been completed. Our machines are already deployed. This container is already started. And here we got some good information. So we have Finale running on, on the master and it has created the subnet 10.1.58.1. The other one on the worker on the first worker server is 10.1.9.1 slash 24 and this one also is another slash 24 network so three separate isolated network has been created for these three hosts and these networks they are not routable with within our network so our lan here is just 192.168.251 0 slash 24 and it has no clue about routing of these subnets, the subnet which has been created here. So these networks here only live inside the containers, inside the container engine of this host. They are all different. Okay, so now let's continue. So the deployment is being completed. Now we will continue on 
uh, from from here to complete our Kubernetes deployment. All right, so now we need to start interacting with our Kubernetes cluster. So for doing the interaction, I will use the same host, this host to interact directly with our Kubernetes. To interact with Kubernetes, we need to download a configuration file from our master server, and we will use the kubectl uh, client software, which is a Kubernetes client software, uh, to to connect to the to the cluster. So we will be we need to get this file. So I will run this command. It's a juju command. I will run it on our uh, here. So right here, actually, we don't have the configuration file. Let me. So with this command, we are telling juju to to go and do a cp to the Kubernetes master and download the config file and save it here in the same folder. So when I run this command, okay, okay. So that's not the master slash zero. We have to look at what is exactly it is called. It's called master slash one, okay. All right, so now we got the config file here. Let me do a cat of this config file. So this config file, it includes some information. It includes the certificate. Oh, it includes also the address for the server. So this is the master server, I think the API server of the Kubernetes, and also some more information about the admin, the admin password. So we need to get this file. I will put this file actually on the local machine here. All right, so let me copy this information and let me also create uh, this file here. So this file should be copied into the .cube folder. .cube folder, it exists because I used to have the Kubernetes installed on this machine. And I will just create this file called config and I paste exactly the same content here. And this file is saved now. Okay, so we have done this. So we got the configuration file. Now we need to install the cube CTL uh, software. So cube CTL is the Kubernetes client software, which we need to install. I will use it on this machine. So we don't need to do anything more with the Juju. Everything will happen on the same machine, this machine which we are having. So let's install this software. We'll use the snap to install the Kubernetes uh, client software. Okay, so Let's copy this command and we use the snap. So I could use the sudo snap install. And this command we will download the Kubernetes. And okay, just installed now. Now if I run kubectl cluster info. Uh, this command will load the configuration file and from the configuration file it connects to the to the Kubernetes cluster. So here now it is telling us that oh Kubernetes master is running at this address. We have hipster, we have cube DNS, we have Grafna, Influx, DB, everything, you know, whatever is related to our cluster, it gives us this information. So this shows that our Kubernetes cluster is running, is healthy, and we can start using our our cluster. All right, so now let's connect to, let's get access to our Kubernetes dashboard. So Kubernetes also includes a GUI, web GUI dashboard, which we can access it from here. So in our, in our Juju uh, guide, the readme, so it tells us that how to enable the, mm -hmm. the dashboard, which is the Kubernetes dashboard added on. Uh, add-on is installed by default. We just need to enable it, which normally it is enabled. So I run this juju command here on the juju host. Okay, so it says it's already enabled, so that's fine. Now to get access to the to the dashboard, we need to run the Kubernetes proxy. So Kubernetes proxy, when I when I run the Kubernetes proxy on this machine, it it creates a tunnel back to the Kubernetes environment because we don't have the, the, the IP addresses which are running our Kubernetes, they are not routable. So using the proxy, we will be able to access to our to our Kubernetes environment. Now from this machine, 
ivy run kubectl proxy. So this command will start a proxy server on this machine and it starts listening on port number 8001. So whatever traffic we are sending to port number 8001, it will go to our tunnel to, to our Kubernetes environment. Uh, okay, so now if I go to this address, so this address is HTTP localhost port number 8001, which is the proxy, API namespaces cube system. So we are going to call the Kubernetes dashboard, which is a Kubernetes dashboard service inside the cube system namespace. So Kubernetes has different namespaces. We can we can create namespaces. Kubernetes cube system is the is the namespace which is created for the Kubernetes internal system like dashboard and the other stuff. So when we start when we start using the the Kubernetes, we can create different namespaces to to create some kind of isolation. Or by default, you can also use the, the default namespace. Now, if I access, if I load this address into our browser and hit enter, so it will tell us that, okay, for we need to do some authentication. So the best thing is either we can do, we can use the cube config file, that config file which we have already saved, or we can create, uh, we can do a basic authentication. So I will use the cube config and let me see if I can access to dot cube folder here. Yeah. So in home dot cube and the config file. Sign in. All right. So now we are signing to our Kubernetes dashboard. So in Kubernetes dashboard, as you can see, we have a cluster tab. The cluster tab shows us some information about the whole cluster, the status of the whole cluster, uh, the CPU age, memory. We have what what namespaces do we have? We have a default, and we have some other namespaces. The nodes are our worker servers, so we have two servers, server one and server two. Uh, these are our worker servers, and it shows also the memory utilization and other stuff. Uh, if we go again here, nodes, you know, it just shows us the same information. Uh, persistent volumes are, uh, as you remember, during the the demo of the of the containers, uh, one of the major uh, concept of the container is that the containers they don't have any persistent storage by default. So whenever we launch a container, we have to attach a separate persistent volume to to the containers so for example in that demo we had for the for the docker with mysql uh, we created a separate we, we mounted a separate drive sep we mounted a separate folder for the persistent storage for the mysql uh, so it's sim very similar here in kubernetes because kubernetes is also completely based on docker so we can create persistent volumes and persistent volumes can be assigned for different applications when we are creating it inside the Kubernetes. Um, and here we can choose the we can choose the, the, the namespace and it shows us the overview of that namespace. So inside our default namespace, technically we don't have uh, much. We have only the Kubernetes service running here and we don't have any pod running so it means that we don't have actually any any service running yet so it's just the base installation of the kubernetes is ready to start uh, doing some deployment and running some applications so now let's continue with our demo so we have we managed to log into our kubernetes dashboard now we are going to start uh, launching a hello world deployment with two instances and two servers and we will access that services, uh, that Hello World service from a browser. So the Hello World uh, application is is a Hello World uh, basic deployment. It's like a Docker container, and we will be accessing that. All right. So now for creating the applications, uh, let's start with with Kubernetes documentation. So I'm in the Kubernetes documentation homepage. 
and let's do all well, let's go on the task and uh, let's start with running application no let's do the access application in the cluster because we want to do some demo that how we will be accessing the applications one of the things which I need to mention here is that when you create the application inside the Kubernetes, they will be all running inside those uh, private IP addresses, which technically we don't have access. They are not routable from outside. So either your network should be able to route and reach to those IPs, or we have to use the techniques like the node port or the load balancer, the external load balancers to be able to access to the internal services uh, so the one which we will be using we will be accessing uh, user service to access an application in a cluster let's use this one yeah uh, so with this demo uh, which is mentioned here in the kubernetes uh, we will be using uh, this one we will create a service for application running in two parts so we will be using the kubectl to run hello world and replicas two so two nodes uh, with this particular label uh, this is the image file the image node hello from the kubernetes so this is the image repository of the kubernetes and this particular uh, this particular this particular application will be listening on port number 8080 so let's run this now and okay i need so I don't need this Juju anymore. So I can, so we have to keep the proxy enabled here running. Let me exit from here. So I'm back on the hosts. And I will run this command now. So kubectl run hello world with replicas two. And we can verify this by running kubectl, for example, get pods. So these two pods, the two replicas is being created here. So container creating, if we can keep refreshing this, we will be able to see uh, the status of the container. Also, if we go on, on the web interface, if I refresh this one, so now you can see a deployment called hello world is created here and is being deployed and we have two pods the two hello world pods which are being created one is on running on server one and the other one is running on the server two the placement of these containers on the server this is all done by kubernetes so it has this much intelligence to distribute these particular containers on different servers replica set it defines that you know we have two of these uh containers running for this service and this is the service for the for our for our application and in the services, uh, we don't have still any hello world service because we have not created any service yet. So service, it becomes like a wrapper on top of this application to allow connectivity from outside to the, to the service. So let's refresh this now and see if it is, if, if they are created. Now they are still being created. And if I refresh the same here, still they are the containers are being created so we have to wait for some time and we can use this command as well get deployments uh, to see the status of the deployment so oh now it is showing two of them are available and if i do get pods yeah so it is showing that they both the containers are running now uh, for more verification we can use uh, this command to describe the deployment uh, this is also another command which can help us to understand what exactly is going on. So the Hello World application, mm -hmm. where it is running, and more information about the load balancing or which port the application is being is, is listening on. Okay. Uh, the get replica set gives some information about the replicas. So same information which we had it in the in the web interface. Now this application is running now if we let's have a look at the uh on the web interface uh okay so now here it shows that the hello world boats the pods are running and uh, but but we don't have any way to access this application yet so we need to create a service for our hello world to be able to see the hello world 
Now for doing that, we need to expose this deployment. So we will use this command to expose the deployment, the hello world deployment using the, the node port. And we will create a service called example service. So example service will use the node port. Node port means the service will be using these host public interfaces. So the interface which we have on these hosts, we will be using these interfaces to connect to the to those servers. So let's do this now. We create this service. And let's create the service here. Okay. And we can use these commands to get information about the service itself. So it says the example service has been created. Uh, it's a node port. The IP address is 10.152. So this is the cluster IP, which is not accessible from outside yet. And it is targeted to port number 8080. Now, this one is the most important part because it tells us that the node port has been created. So our main nodes, they are listening on port number 30549. TCP and if I try to access to one of our servers the server IP address here I will be able to see the hello world application uh, now what are the IP addresses of the host that's something which I don't remember we can we can and that IPs are all dynamic so the IPs which I have here uh, probably they are all changed now let's get uh, an access to our Juju from there, we can find out what are the IP addresses of our servers. Okay, and we run the Juju status. So our master is 192.162.1.145. We can update our drawing also as well. So this one is 145, the master. Or Second one, the, the worker one is 146 and was, uh, the second worker is 147. So this one is 147. And the Kubernetes worker number one is 146. Okay. And so now I know the IP addresses of our host. So what I will try to do is on the first one, the worker one, let me open a web page, try to access on port number, what was the port number? Uh, the port number 30549. Port number 30549, and here we go. So we got access to Hello Kubernetes. Now if I access to, so this one actually, we are going directly to the to Kubernetes worker number one, and Kubernetes worker number one is translating these. It's like IP tables running there probably. And this traffic is being routed to the container number one, which is running our hello world. If I access to, to the other one, to the 147 on the worker number two, the traffic will be routed to the container number two. Let's try that. Uh, we will say 147 and we get the same. So we are accessing server one and server two through this way. Now, if we have some kind of load balancer in the front, we could have access to the load balancer node and load balancer node could send this traffic either to, to the container one or container two. But load balancers on the on the on-prem Kubernetes, it requires some more work because it doesn't have a standard implementation for the external load balancers. Uh, so there are some projects which are running, for example, uh, the metal LB. So that's one of the projects uh, uh, which is going on, I think, metal LB. Uh, metal LB is a load balancer implementation for bare metal Kubernetes clusters using standard routing protocols. And this implementation, uh, so exactly this explains why Kubernetes does not offer implementation of network load balancers for bare metal clusters. So it does provide uh, implementation of the networking load balancers for, 
for uh, public clouds like Google Cloud or AWS or Azure, but it doesn't have anything for the local on-prem deployment. So this is one of the projects which uh, I think is very interesting, and you can use this to create a load balancer service for for the on-prem imp uh, implementations of the of the Kubernetes. Uh, okay, so now we have we were able to access these two nodes, but let's have a look under the hood. Let's see what exactly going on here. How we are be able to access these? What is the flannel? What's going on inside these two nodes? So let's access, let's get two sessions to worker one and worker two and see what exactly is going on there. All right, so let's get another, another terminal and let's connect to, let's make two connections to the Juju, uh, Juju console. And two of them. Okay, uh, so from here we can tell Juju I want to do SSH to uh, this one, the worker, the first worker. Uh, why I'm using uh, this Juju commands is I, I might be able to do SSH directly here to this IP, but uh, when you do this deployment with Juju, it loads the keys, the public and private keys directly from Juju to, to this host. So if I try to access this host directly, I don't think I will be able to do it. I can try that also. Let me do SSH directly here. And now it's permission denied. So I don't have that key. That's why uh, I will use the, the directly from the Juju. So I will use Juju to SSH to the first worker. And the other one I will use, I will tell again Juju do the SSH to to the yeah server tree yeah, here. Okay, so this one now I'm sitting on the server two, and this one is sitting on the server one. Now, what is going on? Let's let's make this screen a little bigger first. Let's have a look at what are the processes running. Uh, so we have Docker running here. We got. We got Nginx uh, inside this particular container. So these are all the container processes, Docker container processes running. And so if I do a Docker PS, yes. let's do it sudo. We see a lot of containers running on the server one. Some of them are also oh, this one is the node hello. Uh, the hello world uh, application which we created here and the rest are all uh, the internal Docker, the internal Kubernetes containers, which are all running. So these are these these containers are running the Kubernetes services, the Kubernetes internal application services, uh, like Kube DNS and all the other stuff uh, are all running here. Uh, and similarly on the server two as well. If I do a Docker PS, here we don't have much, but we have. We have the hello world and also the some controllers of the of the Kubernetes also running here. Let's see what what are the IP addresses we have on this server. Okay. On the server one, we have looks like we have many interfaces and as you can see. Okay, so this is the loopback. ENP 6S. This is this is the main network interface card, which is connecting this server, the physical server, to the network. So this one is running the 192.168.251.146. So this is the main IP of this host, the main connectivity of the host physically to the outside network. Uh, this is another physical interface which is down. We don't care about it. We have a Docker Zero network, but this one is down, so this is not used. And instead of that, we have a CNI network. So this is like a local bridge, local bridge network instead of the Docker. So all of our containers actually, instead of using a Docker zero virtual switch, they are all connected to the CNI zero virtual switch. And CNI zero also is using 10.1.9.1 slash 24. 
and we have a flannel flannel dot one which is uh, having some some IP address also here the rest are all virtual network interfaces these are all the network into virtual virtual interfaces for the containers which are being connected connecting the containers to the to the CNI now why CNI uh, we can have a look at the our our bridge CTO so we have a docker 0 and we have a CNI 0 so docker 0 nothing is connected to the to docker 0 but on the CNI 0 we have all of these virtual interfaces of our containers are all connected to the CNI 0 so when we install in using flannel flannel creates this uh, CNI 0 and also it gets attached to the CNI 0 so whenever traffic needs to be uh, going from from one of the from one of the servers to another server flannel will be able to identify and route that traffic over uh, using the flannel and overlay that traffic using vxlan to the other server so this one the server one as we can see the ip address for the our containers are all based on 10.1.9.0/24 to verify that we can we can connect actually to one of our containers to one of our hello world containers let's let's do a connect to that to one of our containers so let's get the the hello world one let's get this one for example and it will say docker exec IT and this container I want to get a bash sorry slash bean bash okay let's so I think I have chosen a wrong container uh, let's have a look quickly Oh yeah, this container which we chose actually is a pause. Uh, we have to choose the first one. And so let me do this again. So this command, this is a Docker command which runs the slash bean slash slash bean slash bash. It gives us a bash shell on this particular container, which is the hello world. Here we go. So we are in the hello world container. If I do IP address, you can see the IP address of this host is 10.1.9.11. So this is the container running at this IP address, and uh, it's a and we are able to get that page through the through the proxy through sorry the, through the node. So when we are calling the node IP on this port, we have a mechanism IP tables mechanism which is translating this port and sending this traffic to our server here. And if I do a PS, I think we should have, yeah, it's a Node.js server. So it's not Nginx, it's just running Node, Node server here. And it's 10.1.9.11. Now let's go on the second server. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We do the same also on the server too. So if I do a Docker PS, uh, we have the hello nodes. Let me connect also here to the hello node. Uh, but by the way, we have we should have the same thing here. So let's have a look here. So we have the CNI zero and CNI zero. It only has one interface because we have only the uh, the hello node running uh, on this machine, and the Docker zero doesn't have any information. Uh, does and Docker zero does not have any interfaces connected to it. And if we do an IP address. Uh, we have a different network here, so 10.1.68. So 10.1.68 is IP range for the host, for the worker number two. Whereas on the worker number one, the IPs are 10.1.9. So it's completely different. All right, so now on the server two, let's do a route. Let's see what's the routing table. Okay, so let's do ip route so we have 
68 and we have a route also for 10.1.9.0 and this is routed over the flannel one interface so this means that if you on the server two if anyone needs to talk to 10.1.9.0 which is the ip subnet of the server one it has to go through the flannel and flannel will do the the vxlan encoding and it will send this traffic to the to the server one now let's connect to our let's connect to the container similarly so say docker exec dash interactive to this node and i want to run slash bin slash bash and this server is a hello world server and its IP address is 10.1.68.2. Now from this server, if I ping to our to the other container, which is 10.1.9.11, 10.9.11, and you can see we can ping that. And these two servers, 10.1.9.11, they have no connectivity between each other. So this traffic which we are sending from this host to his host, actually from this container to this container, it comes all the way to the bridge zero, and from bridge zero it gets to the routing table of the Linux box, and it will get routed over the flannel. So Flannel will knows that oh for reaching to the to the IP subnet of the worker one, I have to send this traffic to the IP address of the server one, and I have to encapsulate it using the VXLAN. Now how these Flannels they know each other, because we never define anything that hey this is the IP address of the range for the worker one and worker two. How this routing is happening? The answer to that is all of this information is, is stored inside the ATCD database. And these flannels, they are talking to the ATCD database and they know which network each node is covering. Now let's go back here. Let's check, let's have a look at the server one. We didn't check the routing table of the server one. If I do IP route, so in server one, we have a route for 10.1.9.0, which is this network. And we have also a route for 10.1.68. So 10.1.68 is the network which is hosted on server two, and this is being routed on the flannel. Flannel network and Flannel will do a complete Flannel will do the VXLAN encoding. And Flannel will do the VXLAN encapsulation and send this traffic to the to the server server number two. Let's see if I can ping that from here from the host itself. If I try to ping this container which is running in the server two, it's a ten dot one dot sixty eight dot two still I'm able to reach there because my machine, the server one knows that, oh, for reaching the here, I have to send this traffic to the flannel and flannel will do this transcoding, will do the trans and flannel will do the encapsulation and send this traffic to the server two. And server two has a route back to the server one and that's how the whole thing will work. So here, when when I when I try to ping to the to this container running on the server two, when I send these packets, the routing table of this machine sends this traffic, which is in this network 10.1.68, it routes it over the flannel, and flannel will encapsulate this traffic and sends it to the to the server two. Server two will receive this traffic and send this traffic to the container. Now, when the container needs to reply, the reply is towards the IP address of this machine, which is 192.168.251.something. And when this traffic comes to the server two, so 
this machine, the the container will just send this traffic to its where to this where to the to the default gateway, and default gateway which is running on the our on our virtual interface on this virtual switch in the server too, it knows that for routing towards the 192.168.251 network, it just needs to send it directly on that interface. So the return traffic doesn't come through the flannel. It just comes directly. Let's have a look if there is any networking namespaces. And yeah, we don't have. So Kubernetes does not create any network namespaces. We don't have anything here. So it just uh, uh, the CNI interface, uh, the, the virtual bridge, and the flannel. That's how the whole thing works. So we have lots of encapsulation between between the containers. We have lots of encapsulation between the hosts. So, so with all of this stuff, Kubernetes makes it very easy for placing the containers in different hosts and having them all to serve for one single purpose. And this is how the Kubernetes networking works. So as you can see, the underlying networking technologies that are used in the Kubernetes, they are all based on the open source technologies that we have already studied, like the Linux bridges and encapsulation, VXLAN encapsulation, layer two over layer three. Uh, if you need to learn more about the Kubernetes, I suggest to have a look at the Minikube. Uh, Minikube is a, is a tool by Kubernetes and you can just run Minikube on your local machine and get familiar with how Kubernetes work. And you can also do some deployment of different uh, services and application using the Minikube. There are other uh, tutorials also which you can find out inside the Kubernetes documentation, which can help you to understand, to get more hands-on experience using the Kube CTO and understanding of the services as well. Uh, the Minikube also does not support load balancing. If you need to do, uh, if you need to have exposed load balancer in front of the pods, you, you need to either use some public clouds or you can use the Metal LB and do some coding for doing the internal routing for uh, internal routing for the container networks. So this was about our Kubernetes networking lab. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me or write it in the forum. Thank you very much.